Welcome to the 3 a.m. Lowdown. We got news, views, reviews. Viewer discretion is advised. Unexplainedmysteries.com Ghost hunters photograph hooded figure in Sherwood Forest. This is from March 27th, 2022. An alleged apparition has been caught on camera in the woods thought to have once been frequented by Robin Hood. There are new f few forests in England as famous as Sherwood, the home to the legendary and mostly fictional Robin Hood and his band of merry men as they robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. So steeped in history in this stretch of woodland that has become very popular visitor attraction, as well as a target for paranormal investigators hoping to catch evidence of its long-deceased inhabitants. Most recently, paranoia investigator, excuse me, I'm, you know, I read, Dean Buckley and his spiritual medium, partner Veronica had been exploring the woods when they captured something unusual on camera. It was January 29th after 11.30 in the evening, meaning the place was pitch dark. The image they captured shows what they maintain to be a ghost of a hooden figure, one that Veronica believes they may have been Rob, one of Robin Hood's merry men. You know, cloaked. Okay, I'm interested in Robin Hood. Always have been, said Dean. I thought it on my camera and I was so excited. When we were in the forest, we felt we were being watched from all angles. We felt it every time as we went deeper. We heard whistles and footsteps behind us and saw shadows. We would call out to them. I felt excited as I always do. It doesn't bother me. Sadly, though, the photograph... Where is it? The photograph isn't exactly clear. Appearing as a vague shape in the gloom. Could it be one of Robin Hood's merry men? While it is possible, we're unlikely to ever know for sure. And the picture they capture is junk. Here's a better picture of it. You're going to have to zoom in and so forth if you want to see it. This is from the Huffington Post on from March 25th, 2022. I like seeing it with that emphasis. Scientists figure out how vampire bats got a taste for blood. Researchers compared the genome of common vampire bats to 26 other bat species and identified 13 genes that are missing or no longer work in vampire bats. This is Washington's AP. Scientists have figured out why vampire bats are the only mammals that can survive on a diet of blood. They compared the genome of common vampire bats to 26 other bat species and identified 13 genomes that are missing or no longer work in vampire bats. They repeated this paragraph. Over the years, these gene tweaks helped them adopt to a blood-rich diet in iron and protein, but minimal fats or carbohydrates, the researchers reported in the Science Advances. It's a journal. The bats live in South and Central America and are basically living Draculas, said co-author Michael Hiller of Germany's Max Planck <laughs> Institute. About three inches, eight centimeters long, with a wingspan of seven inches, 18 centimeters for those on the metric system. The bats bite and then lap up blood from livestock and other animals at night. Most mammals couldn't survive on a low-calorie liquid diet of blood. Only three vampire species of the 1,400 kinds of bats can do that, and mostly eat insects, fruit, nectar, pollen, or meat, such as small frogs or fish. Blood 
is a terrible source, said Hannah Kim Frank, a bat researcher at Tulane University, who was not involved in the study. It's totally bizarre and amazing that vampire bats can survive on blood. They are really weird, uh, even among bats. Some other creatures also have a taste for blood, including mosquitoes, bedbugs, leeches, and fleas. Well, those are mostly insects. The latest work expands upon research by another team that pinpointed three of the 13 genome losses. The, white, the new paper shows how different vampire bats are even more closely related to bats, which eat nectar and fruit said Kate Langwig, a bat researcher at Virginia Tech who had no role in the study either. With such a low-calorie diet, vampire bats can go long without a meal. In a pinch, well-fed ones will regulate their food to share with the starving neighbor. They seem to keep track of who helped them in the past, said Hiller, noting that vampire bats have a collect Ooh, they have complex social relationships. It's not a kin thing, said Tulane's Frank. They just notice and remember. You're a good sharer. I will reward you. And there's a picture of a vampire bat. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. No, I can't. I'm already in close. All right. Next story. Unexplained mysteries again. I'm not going to dwell on them, but they have some interesting stuff. Couple claims ghost left messages on their computer. This is from March 23rd. You get the 2022. All right. Ken Webster and Debbie Oakes claim to have received numerous messages on their 80s BBC Micro. The mystery, which has endured more than 30 years, began after the couple moved into an old cottage on the North Wales border back in the 80s. While outside in the garden one evening, they noticed a peculiar green glow coming through the window. That has to do with the radio. After venturing back inside, they found that someone had written a message on their computer. True are the nightmares of a person that fears. Safe are the bodies of the silent world. Turn pretty flowers towards the sun, for you shall grow and sow. But the flower reaches too high and withers in the burning light. That was very profound. I think someone snuck in the house. Over time, they received several other messages from what they believed to be the ghost of an individual from the 18th, excuse me, 16th century, who identified himself as Lucas Wayneman. What strange words you speak, it wrote in one message aimed at Ken. You are a worthy man who has a fanciful woman, and you live in my house with lights which the devil makes. It was a great crime to have stolen my house, L.W. Even stranger still, Ken also claimed that the couple had received messages from another individual, this time someone claiming to be from the year 2109. It has been suggested that the house may exist on some sort of cross-section in time, enabling messages from different time periods to appear on the computer. To date, no definitive explanation of these phenomena have ever been found. You know, it's a 1980s computer. Why are they still using the bloody thing? Did the ghost turn it on and start typing? They still have it set up, too. All right, next story. All right, this story is from Latest UFO Sightings. The logo at the top just says sighting. All right, this is from March 26th. I'm going to skip the year. Okay. Strange UFO filmed over Kirtland Air Force Base by the Air Force guy. This is a handle. 
2022. And again, date is a picture. Does look strange. Does look weird. Kind of looks like a mushroom up in the sky. All right, let me read on. The strange, unidentified flying object was seen and recorded in the sky above Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico on 7th of January, 2022. We're going to get to the video in a second. Let's scroll down and read. Video on a video that demon technology. Witness report. Let me start this off by saying that I'm in the Air Force. And I'm pretty knowledgeable in regards to what our aircraft look like. For example, I work on 130s here, and they do not have red and white lights, let alone altering strobe-like lights. In fact, to my understanding, most if not all airplanes today have red and green wingtips. Lights and typically don't alternate in the fashion shown here. As far as the video goes, I was just hovering right above where the entry exit gate is. He was just hovering at prob oh, he was flying, probably at 7,000, 8,000 feet. It was moving and no sound was being generated at all. The video is just causing wind. After filming, I walked to my car, he landed obviously, while glancing back at it occasionally. It was about at the 45 second, one minute walk to my car parking lot, and when I got to the car, I pulled my phone out to take another video. But it was gone, and I happened to glance over the mountains to see one of the lights disappear. Mind you, that wouldn't have had to been traveling well over 1,700 miles to reach those mountains in the time it took me to walk to the car? Again, no noise. It was just hovering. And a few seconds prior, the lights threw me off. This could very well be the same crazy fighter that I'm not aware of. If anyone has any videos, please comment. Let's get to the video. All right, let's play this. Let me get a little better for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was from uh, wherever. Okay, next story. Okay, I'm going to add one of these naughty stories every video because I think it needs recognition. All right, this first story is from India.com of all places. Sexual health myth. Miss <laughs> Myth Busted. I must be excited about the story. What is real smell of vagina? <laughs> Does more sex make vagina too loose? Explained by expert. It's a video, so you're going to have to go to the link. In this video, we have with us Dr. Salif Shroff obstetrician and gynecologist who gives us a clear picture on sexual health thereby must busting <laughs> common sexual myths and rumors that exist and provide real facts on social health all right we're going to take a look at part of the video let me get it better on the screen okay let me play only 10 percent of women are found to have an orgasm during sex so most of them actually need a, a activity like your self-masturbation to actually climax. Women. A woman firstly should be comfortable in her own skin, not feel embarrassed about her body. She should feel happy about the body no matter what kind of size, shape it is. It's a body. <laughs> it belongs to you. Love it. Love it, man. Yes, I do. All right, we're going to cancel that video, man. All right, you're going to have to click the link and watch that. <laughs> Sexual health myth. A lot of weird myths and rumors exist when it comes to the vagina. 
on the most common sexual health myths that people believe is that vaginas can lose their elasticity and become forever loose. <laughs> However, this is not the case as experts say that the vagina is elastic and has the capability to amply stretch during sex. And regular sex does not make vaginas loose. Well, how about birth? In this video, we have with us Dr. Sal Safali Shroff again, obstetrician and gynecologist who gives us a clear picture on sexual health therapy, busting common sexual health myths and rumors that exist, and providing real facts on sexual health. Okay, you're going to have to click the link on this one. They're all the links are in order. I put the sources, so it's there, man. Check it out, and I'm sorry, I'm giggling like a, a I don't know, a boy, schoolboy <laughs> about this stuff. <laughs> All right, next story. Why, hello, dudes and dudettes. No next story, just a bit of rambling. Well, there were mistakes with this first attempt. Sound issues on the video being played through my browser. Not loud enough. I have fixed that for the next video. I'm using OBS Studio. You probably have heard that mentioned before. Basically, the PC sound output is a second sound source besides the microphone. I am not pre-reading the web pages, hence mistakes in reading. I'm sure there are some tips online for radio hosts, etc. For some reading tips, getting the flow right. New intro for this new stuff. Worked on it yesterday. Have to come up with a more creepy, spooky, rock and roll one. More fitting. Take the time to comment below, please. Criticism is helpful. Working on my niche. Niche, that is, not itch. Have to develop a sort of character for my readings. Like the late night horror show host. Sort of thing. Well, I hope this took your mind off all the static going around. More to come as I get into a routine. Peace, love, and happiness are my wishes for you. You are appreciated here. Always. Like, share, and subscribe, please. It helps out a lot. Thank you.